Hello everybody, happy Friday. Um, we've got some updates. Uh, a few little behind the, th behind the scenes things that you won't really notice for me running around here. I have updated the default mod. So uh, acacia trees are now here. Um, again, you're not gonna notice those because this whole world here that I generally do these videos in has already been explored, so there would be no reason for an acacia tree to just suddenly pop up. But acacia trees have been added. I also added a new mod called Intersecting, which, um, according to the page on the forum, creates underground 3D caves, or cave systems, pretty much like tunnels underground and stuff. Again, you're not going to see that because... Um, well, yeah, all the world here's already been generated, so what do I want here again? What do you mean no no clip privilege? I could have sworn I granted myself all these. Um, but yeah, we're not gonna see any of these cave systems here because what's Okay, should be. There we go. Um, yeah, we've already generated much of the world, so I don't think we're going to see any of these new cave systems. Here is something I found, but I'm not a positive if this is from the valley map gen or if this is something from this new one that I've just added. Because, like I said, oh, that's a weak torch, isn't it? Nope, I did the strong torch. Good. So like I said, I don't know, uh, I feel like this already has been generated, so it probably isn't this new cave system. Um, it kind of looks like up ahead here, we're getting to a new map block. So I think right inside of here. Oh, hey, a goblin. Hi, buddy. Yeah, you're building, um, oh, there's two of you. Nice, nice little thing you got going there. Um, okay, well, I guess that does not connect to this. This looks like we're actually in a dungeon. Nope, this isn't a dungeon. This is some kind of a cave. All right, so this may be one of these new caves that have been added in. Kind of looks like a 3D noise kind of cave. Oh, that would hurt falling down in. Good thing I'm flying. So, yeah, those are added. And I've got a feeling this is one. So it's kind of a wow, S sweet little new feature. Um, no longer do you have to dig super deep to get super deep. You just have to find oh, more goblins. Love it. You just got to find one of these underground cave systems, and I'm telling you, you can get pretty deep and get a lot of decent ores without a whole lot of trouble. Okay, so let's go back up to the surface here. So that's one new feature. Oh, man, is that goblin going to get burnt up in the lava? Oh, he just got killed from the lava. Flow down and killed the poor guy. Poor, poor fella. Okay, well, getting back on track here. So that was one... <laughs> Yo, man. So that was one new feature. Um... Wow, I don't know if I did this or if this is what the world looked like. I'm not sure where I am. Where is my house? I should really set that as a home location. Um, This way, maybe? And I should probably turn fast move on if I can remember. There we go. Which key it is. All right, I think. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, yeah, I don't know if that's my fault or if that's how that world out there looked. Oh, whoa, 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 a little too fast. Okay, because I added another new feature. Um, and this was something I did when I updated, defa updated the default mod. I went ahead and added in a couple ABMs. One of the tricks 
or not necessarily tricks, that's probably the wrong word. One of the things I have discovered while doing this is when you make changes to the actual mods themselves, it makes updating them in the future more difficult because you have to keep track of which changes you have made. So you have pretty much two options. Either you can just override things so you can still get the features from the other mods updates and when you update them your overrides are you know in a different mod that's not affected or you can put new files into those mods which is what I did for default so when the default mod updates again I have a file in there in my local copy for this game here that is just called ABMs that will never change from default because default doesn't have an ABM file they have a functions file so basically what I have gone ahead and done and you can't really see it happening too much here is I have added grass growth and grass spread now I took a look and I could be wrong but I didn't see anything any place in code that actually made the grass grow at all to my knowledge again as far as I could tell Grass it places at random heights when you put it out, that I know for sure. But it looks like the stuff that naturally appears in the world just stays the same size forever. And why is this grass not swaying? That's odd, it's supposed to. Oh well, whatever, I probably just turned the option off. But anyways, what I did here, I made two ABMs. I did one for grass growth, so the grass will all spawn at number one from the first ABM. And then I believe every every 20 seconds, there's a 1 in 60 chance that the grass will grow to the next size larger. I'm probably going to have to tweak those, the, um, the chance and the intervals on both of the ABMs. And the other ABM I added actually just does grass spread. So basically what it does is any dirt that's in group soil which is great because there is a lot of those due to the trail pit, uh, trail mod that does the different grounds when you step on it. Um, it basically checks if there is a neighbor of grass, and if grass is a neighbor of the node, um, I believe that one's every 20 seconds, there's like a 1 in 20 chance that the grass will spread, and it'll place grass at a size of 1 here, or you know any of the surrounding spaces. So... And like I said, I've got to tweak these values a lot, I'm sure. What we're going to start seeing happening as the game is played more and more is grass will spread out. And instead of having just the green colored ground here and like all of this ground that looks super walked on, which it is, um, we're going to notice that we're going to have grass that's shorter in places where it's walked on a lot before it turns to changing colors. Because when there's grass, when you walk on it, you change the size of the grass, but you don't affect the ground underneath it. So this, with time, will grow back to being green, and then grass will grow on top of it. Now, unfortunately, grass can still grow on top of any of these, which makes things look a little goofy when you have grass growing on them, and the bottom still hasn't changed back. So I may need to change something in the ABM. I'm not like right here we see a spot where the grass has grown, but it's still a I can't tell what node that is cuz I can't select it because of the bounding box here. But it looks like it's the grass with leaves texture, but it has grass growing on top of it. I potentially could add another ABM that would turn them back to grass immediately when grass grows on top of it. But that really wouldn't be the the feature we'd want, I'd be more preferable to have the grass grow back on the full grass and maybe on the, I think like this node here or this one here. I think that one, the first step that the grass takes to turn to dirt. And then these, the grass really shouldn't be growing on, but because I did just do it all as group soil, um, I really have no control over that. And my other option is to do a list of every single node that's dirt and then leave out like the trail, trail top, um, default dirt, and I guess trail walked on. 
like those three should never have grass growing on them they should have to first turn back to having some greenery on the node itself but um that's something for another day maybe i don't know for sure um let's see any other new changes i don't believe so i think that's it um these guys still don't work at all I showed you guys the cabinet already in the last video. I think that's it as far as any new big changes. Um, I could pull the change log up. Because um, I know there was something that I'm forgetting. But I don't remember what it was. Oh, yeah, Valley Map Gen got updated again. I updated it, I think, before last video an update came out, and now there was another update, so I went ahead and applied that. I uh, said code, code cleanup, better, better, better info in the README, I think, and there was some bug that he fixed. So, the update brings a little better stability, I guess, and... Hopefully, better, better run times. But that's going to be about it, guys. Uh, next week, I'm going to try and get some new trees going in here so we can get actual apple trees, pear trees, orange trees, and we can start using all these new foods we have that don't grow yet. So the only way to get them is by using Give Me. And I'd also like to start implementing disease. I've got the pathogen mod. I think it's still in here, but it doesn't come with anything. I've just got to write up some diseases with the API. So first we'll just do like food poisoning, which will be something you get from raw meat. And then we'll, we'll go from there. I don't know exactly what kind of functions the API all provides, but we'll see what, oh, we'll see what stuff we can get out. I should probably grab that canteen back, seeing as how I am quite thirsty here. Okay, well, guys, that should wrap this update up. I will have the link for the sub game in the description, so you can go ahead and hop over onto GitHub and clone it, or update, as the case may be. And, yes, again, if you guys catch any bugs or problems, please let me know on GitHub, and I will get those fixed as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, and have a great weekend, guys.